Greetings, hello, and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Imperial Jedi, this is episode number five, and a very fun, transformative episode happening right before your eyes. So what I want to do, it's kind of a little bit of everything. I'd like to start us off, because we're really just so close at this point to our next milestone. So I want to start us off by doing a little bit of neighborhood construction just up in here, maybe around that little tram depot. And I just want to start maybe doing some thinking about transitioning into some, um, you know, high density zoning, planning already for a little bit more traffic flow and stuff. So we'll just talk a little bit about that. But the main thing I really want to do is I've been kind of hit with, I think, a bit of brilliance, hopefully, for what we can do with this uh, little corridor that's happening. So really, I've been thinking about how we can take the focus away from the roads and just make it seem like it's more of a transit corridor that just happens to have some roads versus being like an actual little highway thing. So when it's all said and done, what I think we're going to have on the right hand side over here will be one or two train tracks. On this side, I want to have a tram come through, and then right next to the tram, I'm thinking that's where the bike lanes can go. So we'll try and work on that. Let's try and get the bike lanes themselves unlocked. We've been talking about them since like it feels like the dawn of time. But uh, yeah, I also want to end the episode off by doing some of the beautification. So we'll do that on uh, on camera, just so I can uh, show you guys. There's a lot of requests to, uh, to do that. But before we jump into anything, let me show you guys what I've been up to off camera. So over here, no more silly left-hand turns. You see, people are using this, which is great. And the way I managed to get this to work was we just upgraded this to become a six-lane road, and that increased the speed just enough so that the AI was now convinced this is a faster route. My other option would have been to maybe increase the six-lane road a little bit further down, or we could have stretched this a little bit further down too. And then maybe as like a last-ditch resort, this could have been highway. So tools under our belt, we could have tried those. But I think the end result, excellent. So happy with that. And then something I did try to, just based on the comments, had a lot of people just ask um, how you deal with highways on uneven terrain. And so, kind of show you an example here, right? Remember before, this was just kind of like a straight line going over top of all of this, right? And we end up with this crazy wavy davy mess, which is, I mean, not the end of the world. It's not actually the worst. But there are some instances where it's just, it's very bonkers, right? Like, this overall does not look nice. So what I ended up doing is I switched over, and this you could do with bike lanes or roads or really anything, but I switched over to an elevated system. So I just went up to three. Well, let's change that. I think I started at ground level. And then I just went up, and you can kind of see as you drag and move it around, there's going to be moments where it's too low, too high, but you can change the height. Just kind of get it to be what you're after. So you may have to go a little bit slow at it, but if you take your time, I think the end result will be pretty good. And then if you're looking to make parallel roads, this is also how you would get the pillars to line up. So just follow the same point. I guess more or less the same height too. That's kind of dependent on the terrain, but if I want these pillars and whatnot to look kind of the same, okay, this is going to be a lot of trial and error, but I think you kind of get what I mean. And again, this works for trains for really anything. You can kind of see right here, just from the side profile, those pillars line up. Of course, I choose the most hidden ones imaginable, but I think you get what I'm trying to say, right? So, nice uh, uniform look here with no mods, no terraforming. Easy peasy. Okay, so let's, um, oh goodness, oh my goodness gracious me, it wouldn't be an episode if we didn't have a fire, right? As is tradition. Um, speaking of icons, I just noticed how to corner my eye, we've got a garbage icon over here. And something I just figured out, which is really darn cool. So, uh, initially when I was making cities in the old days, I'd be racing to try and get to 7,500 people so we could unlock the incinerator. Because if you don't, you end up having to place landfill after landfill after landfill, because they just fill up, right? But what's really cool is these things here will process trash from the landfills. So you can see our garbage reserves, not too full, just over 10%. And we're processing a fair amount. But if we click on this and empty it, put it on three speed here, we'll see some trucks leaving. We'll start pulling trash out to the vehicles inside. Yeah. And then over here, we'll see this increase, but it'll also process more trash. So this is a new way for us to empty our landfills. Let's just put down one more of these to help process. And of course, the added bonus is that our industrial zones will use this new material in production. And then that can be sold later in commercial zones. So that's pretty cool. We do have a few other icons, you can see the fire is still a bit of an issue, so once we get to the next milestone, which is pretty darn close, we're, I think, going to place down some of the HD versions, so like big high-density versions of the um, emergency services. 
All right, well, over here, I think I just want just a very simple neighborhood, but I was talking about being, I guess, a little bit preemptive with uh, our traffic planning. And this area here is pretty flat, and it's, I think, a nice segue going into the hills. And then you get a really nice view over the city here. So I think this is probably going to be the first of our high-density zones when we unlock them in a couple milestones. And we just want to be, I think, just ready for traffic. But I don't really want to be going crazy with roads and stuff. So I'm thinking specifically for this neighborhood right here. We'll have a nice big old roundabout. And then we'll probably have another uh, avenue road that kind of just follows that little curve right there. Probably right where that terrain kind of makes that dip. And then we'll connect a few of these side roads up. And I was just kind of staring at some other cities and stuff. And I've used this technique in other um, cities I've worked in. But I mean, I was looking at like real life cities. But yeah, what I'd like to do is try having alternating one-way roads. That way the city doesn't have to have the impression of having really big, wide, you know, traffic avenues, but we can still get a really just decent clip through here. So lots of traffic and flow. We can still zone off them if we want to, or we can keep them unzoned. Maybe have like parks that kind of run in between. So I don't necessarily think we need to go the full way in, but we might maybe need to do some experimenting. But we'll just try and implement this into some uh, future city planning. And then something else we can do is we can try and hide some of the infrastructure underground. And so what we could do, for example, is maybe just hide our avenue just in the tunnel right here. So the benefit of some traffic flow, I know it's a little bit crooked, it's underground though. Hide that infrastructure. That's kind of cool, right? And then going back to our little one-way road kind of conversation, if we make this into a one-way road that goes this way, I think that would work really well just with this uh, shopping block. So you just kind of make a right-hand turn, make a right-hand turn, you know, it's just the perfect turnaround. Pick up people, drop them off, drop off goods, and then when you're done shopping, just drive on home. But if you're coming down, it forces you to stay on the avenue. Same with this way here, so it just forces traffic to stay to the bigger, wider roads. I'm happy with that. Now, something we have to be aware of right over here is the noise that this building generates. So we could move it, or we could just keep it where it is and just be aware of that. Let's just craft our little neighborhood here. And just so that we're not doing just like a perfect grid, let's try and maybe break some of the uh, shapes up here. But you know me, I like a little bit of symmetry, so we're trying here. Uh, it looks like I may have nerfed or destroyed some root by accident. Um, did I, or what's going on here? We're getting some trams that are coming back to the uh, the depot. Well, you know, we'll investigate that later. Not really sure why that's happening. All right. Yeah, where were we? Yes. So let's just try getting these two lined up. Beautiful. And to cover that corner. Awesome. So nice symmetry, I think. And then let's say right here, this can be our little one-way network. So we can kind of test how that would work. So watch traffic flow here relative to what the avenue ends up looking like. Cool, so nothing too crazy. And we can start zoning some of this too. And I think maybe just one little cut in like this. I think I want commercial in both these spots just to help block some of the uh, the noise that these buildings here are making. But if we start seeing icons of people complaining about the noise, I think we'll probably end up rezoning this into just one big shopping block where we can just drop down some more services or something. Now, if we are going to zone off the one-way roads, we just got to make sure that there's at least some kind of you know link or something, right? Otherwise, no one will be able to drive in here. So we just wouldn't be able to get any services or, or people or anything. As a cool added bonus, we have this really interesting mix here with the way the zoning squares came in. So we're going to get just smaller, different looking houses on the one side. And of course, variety is the spice of life, right? So that helps us. And then this should just be more than enough to get uh, us to the next. There we go. Speaking of which. So we haven't really done too many uh, policies or anything like that. We'll eventually get there. And then just like the name in the district, we'll eventually get there too. I don't want you guys to think I've forgotten about that. So we'll keep on making some more districts, but I think maybe around episode 10 or so, I'll probably start doing some. 
And we might have a little mini side episode where we just kind of show them off, or you'll, you'll kind of maybe see your name pop up as a surprise. But what's really neat, though, is if you bought a lot of the DLC, you'll start seeing some of those things uh, make an appearance now. So a lot of this is After Dark and the Natural Disasters DLC. So we've got some new roads. Here's what we're after. Bicycle lanes. Oh, yes. Two, four, and six. Great, we're going to put those to work right away. Uh, we got some high density, or like the high capacity, whatever you want to call them, just big, uh, big service buildings. And then this bus station, awesome. It's from After Dark. Some of these parks and stuff are from After Dark. And then some of these guys here from the uh, Natural Disasters DLC. So we can, in fact, place the fire helicopter depot. Even though we don't have the Natural Disasters DLC on, it'll help for sure with the uh, the forest fires. <clears throat> and again, even if we don't have the disasters on, we can still use these buildings for, like, you know, decoration or just to help with the uh, realism. Drop some of these down in the harbor, make it look like we have some, like, warning boys and stuff. Put maybe the weather radar near your airports or up on a hillside. And then these kind of things are really cool, just mixed in with the uh, just your industrial areas and stuff, right? So, lots of options. Main thing, though, is the bike lanes. Very excited about that. So I think to celebrate just the unlock of the bike lanes, what I want to do is let's quickly zone this and drop down some pipes. But I want to just have one really, really long, big interconnected network that just goes from basically one side of the city to the other. And then... We'll, uh, yeah, I think move into our, yeah, tram. Start doing the corridor and then the beautification. Much to do, very ambitious episode. All right, so that's enough to get the, the pipes flowing. I'm gonna put it on three speed so this starts to fill in. And let's just go with the bike lane. Because if you guys remember, we're trying not to widen too many of the roads here. We instead want people to be using alternate forms of transit. Whether that be, you know, pedal power or if they're taking like a tram, or a bus, or a metro, trains even. Now the only thing is we can't upgrade our tunnels, they cannot be a bike lane, you see that? So what we could do instead though is go to our standalone bike lanes, and we could have a tunnel run right alongside. And I always get these comments about how how crazy I am over there just to destroy someone's house just for one bike lane, but sometimes in the name of progress, you gotta do it, right? So we'll try and get that to line up. It's a little crooked, but again, it's underground, so we don't really notice it too much. It's not too shabby. And then once this is filled in, we can put some trees, some rocks down. Just kind of hide the little bits of the uh, the terrain there. But that's cool. And then bicycle, bicycle. Side road here. Because just like our transit lines, I mean, the bicycle lanes, they're only as effective as as the length and the connectivity that they have, right? If that makes any weird sense. Now, the Sims will still use the uh, the sidewalks and stuff to bicycle. This just gives them a, you know, a safer lane. In real life, it definitely encourages people to bicycle. And we're all about safety here, so... Now, what we're actually doing is just removing the parking lanes. You can see all the... Cars, I was at planes. All the cars that are parked there, they're uh, forced to, uh, to park somewhere else. And if you're looking for the parking lots, if you guys remember, we can try doing some uh, green specialization for our commercial zones, and we can end up with these buildings that have the oversized parking lots, just to kind of give that uh, feel and effect. So we'll try and have a few of these, and maybe they could be considered as like neighborhood parking lots or, or whatnot. Now, something you can do with the roundabouts when it comes to the bike lanes. And I'm going to get more, more comments coming to destroy more houses. But we can just kind of follow the contour and curve of the roundabout itself with a bike lane. And if we go close enough, we won't see any of those weird stretchy tears in the concrete. Kind of the gaps, and you'll kind of know exactly what I mean when they happen. Let's see if I go too far away, see those holes? We're trying to avoid that. So like most things in this game, patience and of course trial and error. But I I don't know of anyone who plays maybe the speed when you're doing like a speed build or something, but I can't think of anyone that really plays this in a rush. I don't think you should be playing this in a rush. Unless you're on some kind of speed challenge, but so that's kinda of fun. Bonus points if we do like Dutch style elevated roundabouts just for faster traffic flow. Or a roundabout that would maybe go underneath. And if we wanted to have the even terrain here, we could, in fact, unzone 
and just let the, the bicycle lanes be, but I think that's okay. All right, so let's just make our way past the community center, try and link up a few more of these side streets. And of course, we'll continue with the bike lane later. It's not like this is the, the one and only time we'll be plopping this down, right? And I think it was this very road right here we were talking about wanting to upgrade all those episodes ago. Now you might see some transit icons pop up. I think we talked about that too. Just give it uh, give it a few seconds, and the, uh, the the lanes should sort themselves back out, or the lines. All right, we'll try and be creative a little bit later on with how to get over to our um, industrial zone. Facility empty, great news. Let's go back to one speed. All right, so water, we can actually use a new pump right now. I think it's fine just for the moment. Power, we're getting close, but I think we're okay. Now over here, because we're gonna be doing our transition into high density zoning, let's start placing down a few of the bigger buildings already. So I think specifically we are a little bit low on healthcare, so let's place down a hospital over here. Let's get that nice and centered. And then if we put down, I think a little shopping block right next to this, we can do that kind of trick where we get the, uh, the parking lots to show up. So let's unzone this, put that back as shopping. Let's make a little fun pedestrian walkway system through here too. Just looks clean like that, I think. There's a few buildings, but I think you know my uh, my mentality on that. Okay, that's fine for me. I think we actually made that a little bit off center, but that's all right. It looked like maybe we have some alleyways or something here. Now we want to specialize this, so let's go ahead and make a new district. Another opportunity to uh, to name one of these after you, fine folks. And like really, chances for everyone. So old viewers, new viewers, and not just age, of course. But age too. Everyone's welcome. But equal opportunity. So we'll see some new faces. We'll see some old faces make uh, some appearances in the districts. All right. Specialize this. And remember, we can do both the residential and the commercial at once. Now, the commercial, what's really cool, is it'll have a tendency to use more farming. We're going for like locally produced goods and organic and stuff. So if you keep running into problems with your farms, this is a great way to make sure your farms are getting uh, good use. So we'll talk about that a little bit more when we start doing some farming districts. Okay, so I think that's probably good for um, <clears throat> for healthcare for the city. Might need a cemetery up here too. Which, I, I mean, it could be morbid, but we're going to put this right next, next to the hospital. Or like close by at least. But, you know, these they could, they kind of act as a park, right? So they're not, not a bad thing in the game. That's kind of nice. So we'll check back on this in a second, but kind of get a snapshot here of how this is looking. Now, really quickly, I would like to add a, um, a little fire helicopter depot that I think is just going to be temporary for the moment, because I'm probably confident this area is going to be very, very, you know, it's going to change a lot. But for the moment, just so we can kind of deal with these, uh, these fires. I'm placing this a little close to one of the water sources because the helicopters themselves are going to dispatch. They're going to have to fill their little buckets up first and then they're going to head off to where the fire is. So let's keep those there to help the uh, the cause and we'll do a quick run through for the rest of the services. So fire speaking in which is actually not all that bad. I think we maybe save a little bit of money by not placing down something. Health coverage, death coverage, not too bad either. Still got to beef this area up, but we'll worry about that I think um, once we start doing the transitions. And then policing, honestly, not too bad. What we are running into is an issue with jails. So possibly we'd place that just for the sake of having some more jail space. But I'd argue that the crime rate, everything is really looking good. Even with it, just a little mini uh, police presence. I think our Sims are well-educated, making good uh, good life choices. We'll just place that there just to help the, help the cause. 
And then schooling, no surprise, it's looking great so far. Probably going to need another high school, but we'll, again, worry about that, I think, once we probably move into tra the transition to high density. Okay, happy with this. Let's start working on our corridor, doing some beautification, have some fun with the trams. I've already got something in mind here, too, so... Alright, I would like... I think I... Well, I guess we can't go right underneath, right? Is that where... Is that room? No, well, why don't we come in like this? And why don't we just have a little tunnel? Oh, probably too close. Just back it up slowly. Now, to get this looking symmetrical, we'll find out how much it cost. So that's 1,820. Mm, might be like half a square off, but that's pretty darn close. And we basically want, I think, the tram to be just on this side. And my kind of thought process and logic for, for doing it like this is the highway itself, obviously people are moving pretty darn fast, right? If we have a bike lane right next to it, I'm thinking more so for like, you know, make-believe realism here. If there was like a car accident or something, right, we'd want a bit of a buffer zone. And so the tram is very unlikely to derail. So we'll have some trees, and then we'll have our bike lane over here. So just a little bit added uh, added safety. I don't know if we're going to be right close. Maybe we can just be far enough away that we can get some uh, some trees in there. That's theoretically what we'd be, uh, be doing, this kind of layout. And then train on the other side, and then a whole bunch of trees. And then probably making a park, actually, I think, out of this part here. Why the heck not, right? So there's the field. And then over here, if you guys wanted to make this into a rounded thing, let me show you guys something kind of cool. Move that out of the way. So obviously we can just do this, but that's no fun, right? What if we wanted something that was like a little bit more compact? So you guys have probably seen me do this, and maybe I just didn't explain it before. So I'm gonna just gently move the mouse over. We're gonna wait for it to just find that node, see how it just snaps over. From there, I'm just going to draw just like the littlest road. No need to waste any money on this. And now I'm going to switch over to my bulldozer. I'm going to erase those inner roads and then get rid of these ones. And I don't think we need the three speed anymore. It's just pretty crazy fast. We have a lot of money. We're okay. Now, when I do a curved road in between these, see the distance is a lot shorter. So this just looks symmetrically a lot cleaner. And it just stops the trams from doing a weird little sharp bend right there. I like that a lot. We can do the same thing with bike paths and that kind of stuff too. And what's really cool is you can use this if you want to get some off um, off heights or like odd heights, I want to say, for um, the pause. That's really horrifying. But, uh, but yeah, like for example, right? Like what, what height would you say that is? Okay, maybe bad example. I think that's maybe a three. Is it? No, see, look, it did work. So we actually managed to make, I think, either a four or five meter height road here. So if we were looking for some division symmetry or whatever, some fun, fun, I don't know, stairs, whatever you want to call them, right? Here's some cool ways to kind of cheat the uh, the heights without doing any uh, any mods. And I don't see that not working on a console. And another example I can give, just to kind of give a segue away from this, is let's say, um, let's say we want bike lanes going from here downward. At some point, we're going to have to switch over to a, um, a, a tunnel, right? Or, sorry, a bridge. And we can see how high that would have to be, right? I do realize that was a different way to do it there. But you see how that's the 9 meters? That's too tall. So what we could do instead is, obviously you saw we could have done it that way, but pretend that didn't happen. Anyway, what we could do to shorten this height, let's go down our 12 meters, or our, yeah, 12 unit section, segment. Sorry if I'm not explaining this properly. So we're going 12 units, because that's the smoothest slope. Let me back that up right, see? And then we're going to now, say right about here or so. It's going to have to be about there. See how that brings it down about two meters or so? So we'll delete this. Delete that. 
and same principal idea that we had achieved with the highway. Now when we go over top of the road, hmm, I won't say it's the best. Okay, maybe this is not the best example. I'm sorry guys, I don't mean to waste our time here. I think you fundamentally get what I'm trying to say though. So don't be afraid to use short segments and create additional smaller nodes just to kind of get um, kind of the segments and the heights that you're uh, that you're after. That didn't quite work. Which is ironic because our very first thing we tried right off the get-go did work. Going like this and then going across, right? Anyway, it's funny how this never works when I'm trying to uh, explain it on camera, right? Anyway, I think, I think you kind of get what I'm trying to say. All right, back to our uh, back to our highways and trams. It doesn't look all that bad. All right, so for this side, pretty much the same game plan. We're gonna have a tunnel run alongside next to it. Kind of go in the same, pretty much direction and points and nodes as the uh, as the tram. And then we can, in fact, also do that same little curvy trick. Now we've got a few points you can see where the game has given us some pathways. So why don't we capitalize on that and connect some of these up to the road here. Actually, let's do something a little different. Oh, these snaps. All right, come on. There we go. Now, I'm not really worried that there's those little holes in the concrete there. Let's try and make a small barrier in between the um, the bikes and the uh, the walkway. And give some people a little bit of shade too. So we can make it seem like those are intentional little cutouts, just so we can accommodate some trees in there. So bicycles to the right, people to the left. And then caution must be applied over here. But the tramways, they just act like pedestrian sidewalks. That's kind of a bonus, right? So pedestrian walkway, bicycles, safety netted trees, and then bonus of the park right here. So it should be pretty pretty darn cool when it's all said and done. Now I do uh, want to find a really fun way to get the trams through here. So let's quickly get that done. Don't want to run too much at a time here. And let's try something fun. We could obviously just upgrade this road, but that's not fun. Let's try let's try something cool here. Great. There is just enough room to pull this off. Excellent. So what I'm thinking is we go in like that, and hopefully this will somehow sneak on through. Maybe. Um, oh, you know, we probably have to be a little bit further. Hmm. Can we upgrade this? Oh, well then, take back what I just said, we'll make that two-lane really traffic. Okay, so, here though, I'd like to cut across. I'm kind of picturing something in my head, so I hope this works. I need to be on this square going in. Yes, okay. And then this one going in. All right, great, okay, great, great, great. And I think I want that further, and then that should go great. Okay. Now, if we wanted to, of course, we know we can curve that. I'm not going to bother. It's, it'll take an extra minute or so. But what I want is the trams to not be making as tight of a turn through that part of the roundabout, just for fun. For no, like, no other real reason than just because. And we could do the same thing for the uh, exiting tram traffic, but I think just in the name of time, I'm just gonna do that for the moment. But I might maybe off camera change that over to be similar to uh, to that other one, just, just for fun. And then this can be just a simple tram turnaround point. I'm gonna try and get that in the same line as the path. Just so there might be a bit of him, a bit, I say a hint of symmetry, but a hint of symmetry. I almost said symmetry. Yeah. 
potential for lines. When we push play, that'll that'll fix itself. All right, so let's craft a park and let's do some beautification here before uh, before our time is up. And we'll bring the bike lanes effectively through here. They might not work like this. No. So this will take some uh, some planning. If you're looking though to get a crosswalk hidden, and we can do this in a couple spots, because the Sims themselves unfortunately will not cross the street without one. But what we can do is just throw down a little a little dirt road that creates the sidewalk. Kind of has a pretend make believe like maintenance, you know, lawn access, or you're going to the power lines or whatever. But just an opportunity for the people to cross, and we can put a stop sign there. We can put a uh, traffic light. And then, for example, like right here, we can do the exact same thing. And that's kind of fun, right? So now people walking down, they can use that. We can connect this into the park when it's all said and done. Okay, so I'm just going to speed through this next little, little bit. Just in the interest of uh, saving us some time here. But I did, uh, I did say I would do some beautification, so I haven't forgotten about that. Speaking of beautification, what you can do if you're looking for just a little bit of, uh, just kind of visual fun, try this kind of stuff. Challenging though to get them in place, especially with all the, uh, the guidelines. But the end result ends up looking so cool. So we'll put some trees in between there. Ties in nicely with the uh, the highways. We don't have to put it the whole way down, but nothing's stopping us from doing it though. And just for a bit of fun here with the park, let's just let's just go a little bit crazy. So we do want a way down from over here. So let's just go across. Let's we'll do our best to eyeball this. Not so bad, actually. I was expecting worse there with the uh, the terraforming. So we can have that go like that. Have that hopefully make a little bit of a connection. We'll monitor that for, for traffic uh, and see if it does actually happen. And then now let's just have some fun and let's just draw a nice big old uh, path next to this and then have a dirt one that just kind of has a free form. Maybe just a bit of separation through here. Turn this on. Bring this over so it lines up with the crosswalk, works with the hospital and everything right here. And then this is where we can just have an absolute free for all. And what we're going to do is just completely fill this corridor up with trees and stuff. So when the city is kind of all said and done, when we're looking from the, the overhead, when we zoom out, it'll just seem like one giant mega oversized park in where this transit corridor is. And that's kind of my thought, and that's why we're making this wide and just pretty, pretty large and in charge. So it should be pretty cool. And let's give our people some options here. Now this kind of stuff might happen, that's no problem. We'll just redraw that. And we'll just put down some uh, some trees and rocks and other cool things. I might maybe be able to get that look better. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's quickly do some trees and some rocks. And I'm starting with the small rocks, is our little base first. And I think we want this whole area here covered. I don't think we'll spend too much time on that side, simply because we are going to be putting the train in later. 
Now let's move up just a size here. When we drop these, I'd say the most important thing is to rotate it before you drop the next one. Unless you're going very, very far off. And then my thought on that is, see if I don't rotate them, see how quickly they look very, very repetitive. But if I rotate, even if they're all together like this, it starts looking very different. And then of course for that reason too, we can just do the, the switch up, try other ones. And I think these look great on uh, some hills and stuff too. As a kid, I could like, I would not be able to resist climbing all over that, right? That'd be kind of cool. And you know, it, it's up to you, of course, right? But I think less is more sometimes when it comes to the rocks. And I'll maybe go a little bit overboard with the trees, but totally up to you. So along here, and again, I probably won't do the whole thing just because time is not on our side. But I would probably do something like this, and this would just act as you know, in real life, maybe like a little dust barrier, sound barrier, wind barrier and stuff, right? So you're not getting a whole bunch of dirt and stuff from noise from the uh, from the highways and the tramways and stuff. And we'd probably have another row that goes in in between here too. And then of course, when we zoom out, right? It just looks like one giant park. That's kind of the logic for that. And then I think over here, because this is more of just like a freeform kind of park, we're just gonna drop a whole bunch of these and just go for a lot of density. So if you're looking to get away from, you know, from the city a little bit, you got this park that's just kind of following you wherever you go. Just take a little, little detour a few blocks down, and all of a sudden you're in the shade and quiet. If you're looking for some land value boosts as well, I'd try to work some of the actual parks in from the game too. So drop down one of these guys, and then connect some of the pathways to it. Maybe we can try that a little bit later on. And of course, density, all that stuff, up to you. I'm looking for something that kind of matches the rest of the city, so we're pretty much going to stick in that uh, general theme. Cool, right? And maybe we can just kind of have that same effect down the middle, so... Alright, my friends, I think I'm going to leave us here. I will see you in the next one. I'll continue doing this. So you guys will see in the thumbnail the... Uh, what the park will end up looking like, of course, but... So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely pick up where we left off. The city looking great. Loving this new neighborhood. And this kind of turned out the way I was hoping. So we get the extra parking lots, a little bit of shopping. The hospital, I think, looks really nice compared to the rest of the size of the buildings here. And then, yeah, just a few tall condos kind of looking into the uh, the river and stuff. It'll be kind of cool. All right, guys, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Especially with our new neighbor uh, neighborhood bike path and stuff here. This is really fun. So yeah, we'll see this all uh, all done up in the next episode. Anyway, guys, happy building. All the best. Take care, and I'm looking forward to the comments.